tis the season to be really jolly here on Miss Earth Crown. After a successful and unparalleled coverage of Miss Earth 2020, Miss Earth Crown moves forward with a new look, a new brand, and new original content. This is MEC TV. This Christmas season, witness the premiere of our brand new show, In Focus, a show where we ask important questions, one on one. And for the premiere season of In Focus, all eyes are on Miss Earth USA 2021. And our American queens will be here to prove why they should be the next Miss Earth USA. And in the coming year, get ready for a bigger and bolder Miss Earth 2021, the MEC coverage. With our shows that will definitely keep you posted. MEC in focus. One on one, hot button, hot topics. MEC inside stories. Interviews with present and past queens and more special guests. An MEC Pageant Roundup. Your weekly dose of Miss Earth Pageant analysis during the Miss Earth season. So join us starting this holiday season and in the coming year with a heavy dose of Miss Earth that only MEC TV can deliver. Hello everyone. Good evening. Are you surprised to see me in like this? So I'm, I'm um, being a reindeer tonight because the Christmas spirit is definitely already in the air, and Miss Earth Crown has caught that. So tonight we are actually having our pre-Christmas special or our Christmas special. Here I am with my Christmas tree and my reindeer costume and my hot chocolate tonight. And you know. It's Christmas. It may have been a challenging year, but of course, there's still a lot of reasons to celebrate Christmas. And one of those reasons is, of course, our ability to do whatever we want and be able to advocate for whatever we believe in and push for that. And tonight, we have a very special guest who is able to push forward for her advocacy and carry that with her in her journey to Miss Earth USA 2021. I'm, ex I'm excited um, for our guest tonight because where she comes from is close to my heart because I have a lot of close relatives in where she is from. And that is, of course, Illinois. So before anything else, let me introduce to you our special guest for tonight, Miss Illinois Earth 2021, Christina Deschel. Hi, Christina. Hi. Good to see you. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now, okay, let's go. There you go. Thank you very much, Christine. I'm very, I'm, I'm good. How about you? How are you doing right now? I'm great. It is very early here. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So thank you. Thank you so much for actually waking up very early in order for you to do this interview. And also thank you for preparing for, for following the brief. Look at you. I, I'm so happy that I'm wearing um, reindeer costume right now because you are my beautiful Santa. And, you know, it's like your wish is my command. Thank you very much. And that is how, that is it. The reveal our guest for tonight, Miss Illinois Earth, Christina. So tonight we are going to be talking a lot um, about a lot of things. First, of course, your advocacy. And, of course, we also want to get to know you better. Okay. But first, before we do that, Let's look at our comment section because we already have a few comments from your supporters and, of course, from the Miss Earth Ground supporters ready to give you some love. And one of those, of course, is Ralph Sambat. Hi, Ralph. Ralph just messaged me a while ago. She, he's at work right now, but he said he will drop by to, of course, see us and see you, Christina. And so here we go, Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, another comment Okay, is from Rex. Okay, Rexner Josh Motol Nose. Okay, just giving us, just blowing us kisses right there. Thank you very much for those, for those comments, and thank you. So everybody, 
please feel free to com uh, to key in on the comment section your questions, your shout out requests, and of course, show some love to our guest for tonight. All right. With that, we are now going to our first segment. Before we ask um, Christina the the important question, of course, let's go and um, get to know her a little bit more personally. All right. So today we are going to have our first segment. Okay, first, our first segment is called Virtual Holiday Icebreakers. There you go. Yes, we love, we love our virtual holiday. Yes, we love them, our virtual holiday icebreakers. So we are going to ask Christina some questions. And uh, let's see what questions are. Of course, these are holiday-related questions. And please answer. Okay, um, the first one is, what is the strangest christmas present you have ever received there you go what is the strangest christmas present have you, that you've ever received can you tell us about it sure um honestly i haven't had much strange um holiday presents however one that really stood out um and i'm not judging by any means because i actually love receiving those it's a pair of socks mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but they were like what those cozy socks you know that you can wear around the house um mm -hmm. so i was very thankful for them and um you know i appreciate any gift um just the thoughtful the thoughtfulness is great but yeah probably a pair of socks would be the strangest thing <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah thank you very much for uh, yeah a pair of socks yeah, this is, they're actually cute. It depends. I think it depends on the design of the socks that you get, you know, if they're be strange or not. But, you know, we love some winter socks um, here and there. They're great, so thank for, you um, they're great for, like, Santa when you're doing, um, you know, when you have exchange at work um, and you do Santa. Right. Uh, those are great for that. <laughs> Maybe not That's so much for a relative, though. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, they're definitely like secret Santa staples. Absolutely. So that's one of the considerably strangest Christmas presents um, that Christina has ever received. There you go. Thank you very much for answering that question. Which now let's go to the next question. And that is, what act this 2020 might land you on Santa's naughty list? Has there been any? Or you've been... Or of you've been course. a good person this year. <laughs> yes, definitely a good person. I think that, though, everybody can always improve on something. Um, recently, this year, I actually started my master's degree. Um, mm. And one act that would land me on the naughty list is probably procrastinating and not doing my homework on time. <laughs> I feel like every little child has been through this at some point in their life, but just, you know, being um 26 year old and still procrastinating. Yeah. <laughs> definitely need to pick up on that act <laughs> thank you very much you know what hashtag i feel you there you go it doesn't choose any age you know even for people who are in their 30s uh, we still do procrastinate sometimes and that reveals my age too but thank you very much for being honest with that one yes and yes i heard that you are already taking your master's degree but i'm sure now that you realize that that you've been naughty that way this year, you will be <laughs> graduating with your room for improvement. Right, room for improvement, and and of course, I'm sure you will be ending your uh, master's degree with the um, flying colors. Yes, thank you very much. There you go. How about you, Earthlings? What is going to land you on the naughty list this year? You can tell us in the comment section below. But before you do that, let's move to the next question. The next question is. What is your all-time favorite Christmas family tradition? Oh, lovely talking about this. We're curious. What is your all-time favorite Christmas family tradition, Christina? Um, probably um, Christmas Eve, the night before. Um, we mm. actually, um, I, I love um, eating duck meat. So, you know, I'd have my mom um, cook mm -hmm. duck. Um, actually, I was vegan for a year prior to this, but oh. because of concerns, yeah, I had to kind of get back into eating meat again. So she, we would have like duck, um, and it's become like a tradition. And mm -hmm. after we'd make like gingerbread house and just, you know, um, get around the cabin of the house and, you know, watch movies, drink hot cocoa and 
what can be better than that? <laughs> right. Yes. What can be better than drinking hot cocoa? Seriously. There you go. Thank you very much. Yes. We actually have almost the same um tradition. Not not the food though, but you know, being up on the twenty fourth and you know yeah. eating um uh, yeah a great Christmas dinner. But thank you very much for telling um us about your Christmas family tradition. There you go. That was such a nice family tradition. Thank you very much. Next, what is your favorite Christmas song? And if you can, and if you want, only if you want, you can sing us a few lines of your favorite Christmas song. Man, I don't really have a favorite one, but one that, okay. especially in America, um, we play a lot. A lot is by Mariah Carey. All I want right. for is you. <laughs> and I know that sounds really cliche, but but um, it's a great song. It's a great holiday song. It definitely brings in the spirit. So probably that one only because they play it so much, and it's always stuck in my head. You know, like you right. go to the grocery store, and next thing you know, you're singing in your head. All I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, you know, not only in America, but all around the world. If you, if you, Christina, and the others are the queens of the earth, you know, Mariah is definitely the queen of Christmas. And, Absolutely. You know, right. We always hear her songs. There you go. Now, can we, can we have a few lines from you or <laughs> you'd rather pass? It's a more, it's early in the morning. <laughs> Oh man, you know I haven't worked at my voice yet. I just want <laughs> no let's problem. Try, let's try at the end of the show. Okay, we can. Yeah, let's try. And if you Earthlings want to join that, we definitely would welcome that. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Now let's look at the next one. All right, if you could stand under a mistletoe with one celebrity crush, who would it be? Oh, this one's going to get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> uh, probably Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, he's mm. one of my big role models. Um, not only is he you know, a great actor, but he's actually a great advocate for the earth as well. That's uh, right. That's right. I really look up to, um, you know, it's one thing he looks great and, you know, and he's very talented, but he's also a great advocate. And um, he also made a movie, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't recall the title of it, but it had to do, um, you know, with global warming. And he's uh, he's a great advocate, so I always looked up to him. He would probably be the one <laughs> that, right. that I would stand under the mistletoe with if I could. Right. And I'm sure a lot of um, our Earthlings can relate to you on that. Like, they would probably want to stand under the mistletoe with Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> as well <laughs> thank you very much for that okay now this is the last question for our icebreaker complete the sentence it wouldn't be christmas without family mm. oh amazing amazing Absolutely. there christmas you go is nothing without family families are um rock it's our it's our core so definitely appreciate what you have definitely i completely agree with you you know be beyond all those the gifts that we get and give the best gift would always be the people who Absolutely. we love and are dear to us right and that's definitely our family what a family oriented person um christina is and that is such, it's nice to know so thank you very much for that christina all right so that was our first segment and it's it's just the first segment but We've already known a lot about Christina. And before we go to the next segment, let's look back. Let's look at the comments once again. Okay, another um, uh, a friend of ours who is also a, um, a big pageant blogger here in the Philippines. Mars France. France um, is saying, love it. There you go, France. Right, super pretty. Yes, right? Right, Christina is super pretty, super beautiful. So thank you very much for that question. And I agree with your comment. Okay. Okay. Now, um, John Paolo, I will show your question, but actually, we will be asking this question later on. So please um, stand by and wait um, for Christina to answer this question. We'll just show um, you guys um, um, John's question, but we will be asking this later on in the later part of our show. Hi, Miss Illinois. If you'll be given a chance to be the next Miss Earth USA, what is your advocacy? Christina will be talking about that later. And you have to stay tuned because her advocacy is a strong one. It's a strong one, definitely. 
right? Another question from our editor-in-chief, Mark Gacholiat. What's your personal wish for the coming year 2021? I think this one you can answer now, Christina, if you would like to. What's your personal wish for the coming 2021, for the coming year? Um, I mean, other than uh, receiving the Miss <laughs> USA title. Um, of course. <laughs> obviously, that's the big one. Um, if something else I could change um, or work on, probably probably to be a little more persistent um, mm -hmm. and not procrastinate. Um, you know, we all have our good and bad habits and just something I'm guilty of. Sometimes, you know, we always wait until the last minute to do things and it's not always the most right. efficient way to do it. So, you know, if I could wish for something other than the Miss, U um, the Miss Earth USA crown, it would be that. that. No, that's a great answer. Thank you very much. It's an honest, Honest to goodness, great answer. So thank you very much for that. And thank you, Mark, for asking that question. All right. Thank you. And there you go. Oh, our team says, love the outfits. Yes, of course. We prepared for this. Of you course know, we did. Um, it's a pre christmas right? Thank you very much. All right. There you go. Now, well, we'll get back to your comments later on, ladies and gentlemen. But for now, we are going to the next segment. And this is an important segment because before we get to know Christina's advocacy, let's get to know her Miss Earth USA story. So now let's go to our next segment, okay? My pageant story. And this tonight, in this case, it will be Christina's pageant story So for Miss Earth USA. So we are going to go through um, Christina's uh, Miss Earth USA story through some photos. So we would be showing you some photos, and we we would like you to um uh, talk uh, talk about those photos, what the background story of those photos. Let's look at the first one. The first one is this. Okay, all right, this one. Can you tell us about this photo, Christina? Yes, that was my first ever state pageant. Um, it was for Miss Earth, and I competed as Miss uh, Windy City to obtain the Illinois state title. Um, yeah, it was definitely an interesting experience. Um, this was, uh, I believe, almost three years ago. And it was it was tough. And I remember on that day, actually, um, we had very heavy snow. Um, and, you know, a lot of the contestants were late and there was all sorts of disorganization and chaos because of, you know, due to the weather. So you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Chicago, we have some very um, cold and some very severe weather in the winter. But, um, you know, I, I'd i have to say out of experience now, um, I came in relatively little prepared um, mm -hmm. because I didn't know much about pageants at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And, but I made the most of it. And I believe what really separated me from, you know, the rest of the girls is the ability to answer my uh, final question on stage. Once it right. Was. Yeah. So I think that's what really separated me. And I had a really strong answer. And it was just a great experience. Um, if I could go back and redo it, maybe I'd prep a little more. But, you know, I still want it. And I'm still here today. So I'm thankful for everything and all of the experience I've had so far. Wow. That's that's a, that's amazing. Thank you very much for um, that answer. If, if we will re re refresh the minds of our Earthlings, you first joined... Miss Earth USA, well, starting from the state um, level, in 2018, correct. am I correct? Correct. Yes, oh, 2018. Really. There you go. So see, so it's been it's been a few years already. And yeah. let's move on to the next one. How about these photos? Look at that. Two different um styles, but all looking beautiful. Can you tell us something about these photos? Yes. So this was actually um, at Nationals during 2018, um, where, again, I competed as Miss Illinois. And mm -hmm. the first one, it was at prelims. Um, right there, I'm wearing it, the Ashley Loren style. Mm -hmm. And um, the second picture is at prelims as well. And that was my nightgown. Um, so... It was great. It was very pink. I mean, obviously right now um, I have a little bit of different style than before. Um, as you can see on there, um, I marketed myself a little bit different. I was, you know, I had like the pure white blonde hair. Right. That was just the phase I was going through and I really loved it. And now I changed it. I toned it down a bit. I'm a little more mature. So um, 
you know, I market myself a little differently. Um, that, that was actually a really great pageant because if it wasn't for learning everything from my first national pageant in Miss Earth USA, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here today competing again. Mm -hmm. I really took everything I learned um, and just applied it to, to, you know, now and what I know and incorporated everything to really make the best version of myself. And we actually see that. We actually see um, your improvement and even your look right now. Yeah, we know that you've matured in a very, very, very good way. And so we are excited for your journey. That's why we're more excited for your journey for this um, edition of Miss Earth USA. Thank you very much for the background story for these photos. Oh, look at this one. Looking so beautiful. Okay, how about this? What is the story behind this photo? Yes, this was actually crowning night. This was the last night um, as Miss Illinois Earth during mm -hmm. 2018. Um, so we went ahead and we crowned Brittany mm -hmm. um, that night. And the girl next to me, she is Miss Illinois Teen. Um, and sh she's great. I mean, we've had such a great advocacy together. We've worked many events together, did a lot of volunteering um, opportunities. And that photo is just so strong for me because it kind of brings together my whole year in, uh, you know, just one photo um, because Taylor right. was such a, um, she was such a huge part of, of my advocacy and, you know, somebody who I worked with all the time. Amazing. Thank you very much. And now look at these stunning photos. I, we're loving it. Yes. And of course, now let's, um, as we see this, um, this uh, photo of you, let's look back at the years from 2018 to now. And I would like to ask you about the lessons um, from all those years. So what have you learned and discovered about yourself and that you are bringing with you to your journey um, to Miss USA Earth 2021 that you've learned from your first Miss Earth USA stint up to now? I think the biggest one would be a lot of times when you're competing against so many, um, you know, beautiful ladies. Um, a lot of times we tend to get caught so much in competition mode with others, you know, um, and it's just a natural reaction that everybody has. Um, however, throughout the years, one thing that I've learned is to really um, work in silence, work hard in silence, um, stay humble and work hard and be really the best version of yourself because that's really what's going to make you stand out. Don't focus on others. Don't look at what the other candidates are doing. Be you and be original. That is an amazing answer. Thank you very much for that. Right. I love that. I love that you said work in silence, you know, be you, be original. That is correct. And a lot of times, and also witnessing this as a, um, a pageant observer for many years now, that being original, being authentic, and being you really brings you to a lot of places, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. And sometimes, yeah, right. And and most of the time, it also brings you to the crown. So we are so happy, and we're, we admire your staying yourself all throughout this journey. Thank you very much. Now, speaking of journey, um, my next question is. From 2018 to now, you've stayed with um, the Miss Earth system. Can you tell us why why you stayed and why you chose the Miss Earth system ov over these years? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to answer that. I think um, a huge portion has to do with my uh, career choice. So mm -hmm. I am currently studying to be, um, you know, in international relations and a diplomat. And yeah. as a future diplomat, I'm actually focusing on environmental advocacy and sustainability. Um, so currently I'm taking a lot of courses and I'm learning a lot. You know, you're not always going to walk into a room and know everything about sustainability. However, you know, as the journey goes, you can learn more and more and more um, about the environment and what th ways we can, you know, um, live more sustainably and preserve our planet. So one thing that really led me to continue with the system is really just influenced by, um, you know, my education um, in diplomacy and by my mm -hmm. future career goals. That's amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I heard that um, you had a homestay before um, in Europe, if I'm not mistaken, and that also like influenced like you witnessing um, things over there also influenced um, your advocacy, your passion for the environment. Am I correct? 
Yes, absolutely. I lived in uh, Switzerland, Geneva, um, and there I actually took a study abroad program in my undergraduate studies about diplomacy. So that's how I knew I wanted to go into it for my graduate oh. degree. It really started back there, yes. So I took a program. I really loved the content. Um, and I always imagined myself traveling the world, talking to people, negotiating. These are just, um, you know, people skills that I have and I'm confident doing. So this was just kind of my career choice that developed over time. And Amazing. And I, there I stayed with the host family at the time and my host mother, um, and I always tell the story because it's just so funny. She, she came out one day and she started, she was so angry and I'm like, why are you angry? And she's like, you're standing under the shower for 30 minutes, like here in, <laughs> <laughs> here in Switzerland, you know, it's a struggle to, to um, get fresh water. And actually water over there, it's very expensive as well. And, mm. and I believe they do it on purpose so people can preserve it and really only use how much they need. So she's, she, you know, she's like, well, if you want to stand out of the shop for 30 minutes, I expect you to pay the water bill. <laughs> so, you know, it's, and, and since there I kind of started thinking, you know, it just kind of gets you thinking and you're like, man, this is so different from the tradition we grew up here because right. even like my sister, my parents, you know, it's such an American thing to take long showers. Of course, it's not everybody does it, but we're not really conscious of that um, a lot mm -hmm. of times. So it just brought consciousness to kind of you know what you're doing you should be conserving the water and not just standing there and not fully utilizing it so that's kind of where everything started for me over the years so then you know and and what she would actually do is she would set a timer for five minutes and after five minutes she'd turn off the hot water <laughs> really five minutes well okay <laughs> Yeah, but I love it. I love it because until this day, you know, I still use it. So it's just a habit that right. you develop. But once you get in the rhythm of it, you know, right, easy breezy, easy breezy. That's true. That's true. I agree, though. You know, like uh, twenty-five minutes less in the shower makes a lot of difference. And if a lot of people do that, then that's a lot of water saved, mm -hmm. right? Thank you very Absolutely. much for, right? Thank you very much for telling us about that. Um, very interesting story. You know, uh, sometimes our advocacies are things we're passionate about start somewhere. And thank you for telling us where yours started. And speaking of um, water and speaking of saving water, that brings us now to your to, to your advocacy and your advocacy on clean and equitable water supply. But before before we go and talk about that, let's look back again at our comment section and um it's actually popping right now because we have a lot of like um people commenting so there you go alfonso says um santa baby christina and emma the reindeer yes that's what we are right now yeah <laughs> we look it looks like we talked about this but this is such a happy happy accident so thank you so much and now um oh yeah mark lee says you seem like a fun loving gal gorgeous that's what that's the sense i'm getting too you know, <laughs> The mere, the mere fact, Christina, that you woke up very early, dressed up in a in a, a beautiful Santa costume, is already uh, showing how much of a, a go getter you are, a fun loving person. Yeah. So thank you very much for the effort. Thank you, thank you so much. And you know what? Aside from, of course, our Earthlings, another eco sister is watching right now, and that's Sarah, Sarah Massingale. Um, she has, she's dropping by, can't stay long, but wants to say thank hi. You, Sarah. And thank you. Great to see her at nationals. Oh, I'm there so you go. Funny. Yes, and um, speaking of Sarah, um, Ralph says, Good morning, Sarah. Um, we Ralph already greeted us a while back, so now good saying good morning to Sarah. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Ralph, and thank you, our earthlings. Thank you. Now it is time for us to talk about something very important, but before we do that, let me take this off already. So that people take me seriously. There you go. <laughs> but because it looks your hat looks beautiful on you, Christina. There Can you I go. Put it off too, so people take me seriously. I don't know. <laughs> no, but it it looks so beautiful on you. Like whatever you wear, I think. There you go. But now because I want I, I wanna focus on this one because I, I believe this is such an important advocacy and such a strong one. Such a strong one. And your advocacy on I will let me just show this one. Um, clean and equitable 
water supply. Wow. You know, so um, let, exp, tell us more about this because, you know, it's, it's easy to advocate for water. It's easy to advocate for clean water. It's easy to advocate for conservation of the water. It's just like save water, you know, mm -hmm. shower for five minutes. Um, don't turn on the faucet whenever you're brushing um, yeah. your teeth. But it's, this is like clean. This is very specific, clean and equitable water supply. So please tell us more about this. Sure, yeah. So when I competed in 2018, um, originally my platform was water conservation. However, throughout the years, um, and for this year, I'm like, okay, what about it, right? So mm -hmm. I wanted to kind yeah. of dive deeper into that and let's focus on something and a a, a, have a deeper meaning than just, you know, conserve water. Okay, but right. what about it, right? So one thing that I did different this year is um, I volunteer twice a week um, at St. James Food Pantry, and it's actually on the south side of Chicago. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, in an area where um, it's very underprivileged. There's a lot of homelessness um, and just, you know, people are kind of making ends meet or barely making ends meet at this point. So, you know, what one thing we do for them is package um, lunch, package groceries for them throughout the week. They're on, um, and they're on a, like a system where, you know, and I actually learned how to do it where you can check them in on the computer and whatnot. Now, where my advocacy comes in that mm -hmm. is, um, we also not only deliver food, but we also deliver clean and equitable water supply. So before I started um, working with St. James Food, food Pantry, they actually, um, they would give out plastic water bottles. And when I was there, I was just, I started as a volunteer and I commented, I'm like, hey, do we have it, you know, can we package or can we give water and some other packaging, um, you know, and still deliver clean and equitable water supply mm -hmm. in a more environmentally friendly way. So essentially what they ended up doing is getting recyclable cans, mm -hmm. you know, um, and started, we started packaging those for people. Um, oh. So that was kind of uh, where the idea came from, you know, bringing fresh, clean and uh, equitable water supply to underprivileged communities. Um, and that was one of my huge work with them this year, particularly because the other organizations I work with, um, mm -hmm. a lot of it is virtual, like UNICEF, Search for Water, mm -hmm. uh, all of that is virtual due to COVID. So, but, mm -hmm. you know, because of the high demand um, with, you know, you can't just, virtually give people food you know you have to be there right. so right. Um, i've continued to volunteer with um st james food pantry weekly um actually today we're meeting again later on today, so yay. excited for that <laughs> um but you know they're definitely the backbone of my advocacy um because of that hands-on work um, other ways I've also concentrated on my platform and just really um, doing water conservation or preserving the water is actually focusing on children. And we can get to that once we get to my, you know, Think Global, Act Local project. Right. It has a lot to do with it. That's amazing. Thank you. So I'm excited to get to that um, area already. But before we do that, I would just like to um, commend you on your advocacy and the solid ways that you are actually implementing it, you know. Uh, more than just hearing an advocacy, what really matters is how a queen performs that advocacy. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. Now, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is um, our Queen Christina's main advocacy. What do you think about that? Uh, please, you can you can tell us, you can comment, you can show some love and support for that advocacy. Thank you. Now, let's look at the next one. All right. Now, let's speaking of your Think Global. Act local. Yes, let's now go to that one because aside from their main advocacy, ladies and gentlemen, our Miss USA Earth Queens also have their Think uh, Global Act Local projects. And now it's time for you, Christina, to um, tell us more about yours. So, what is your Think um, Global Act Local pro project all about? Sure. Um. So. When actually originally this project was launched, um, it was 
kind of right when COVID started and everything mm-hmm. shut down in Illinois. So it was, you know, a little difficult to have gatherings. However, I was able to pull um, about six people and two queens came along to this project as well at the time. Um, with Miss Wisconsin, which is still currently a delegate, um, and Miss mm-hmm. Great Oaks, which was for 2020, and now there's um, there's a, um, a new girl who is advocating mm-hmm. for that. But um, at that point, you know, things shut down and I I was like, man, I want to, you know, I want to do a project that has to do a lot with the pandemic. Like, Mm -hmm. it's so relevant. Let's include it in my project and tie it in as well with the environment. I mean, Mm -hmm. how you know, it's perfect. So I after some long thoughts, because, you know, I didn't know what to do. I had to get really creative. Um, and you know, it was mandatory also for this project to be in person. You couldn't just do it online. Exactly. So, absolutely. So I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Since my, um, my advocacy is to focus on children and, you know, um, having them learn how to develop habits that conserve water, maybe I could do a gathering where, um, I, it could be like a conference style where I could have children and I can present to them a PowerPoint and teach them about how to properly dispose of masks. Right. Right. So it was the perfect, to me, it was the perfect idea of kind of incorporating the pandemic and the environmental and my advocacy at the same time, like looking for that intersectionality between Mm -hmm. all three things. Um, So what I did was, you know, I gathered around, um, you know, family, friends, uh, children who were interested to do this workshop with me. I put together a PowerPoint, you know, I bought them donuts and, you know, the best oh. ones to got kids. Of course they were going to come. <laughs> if, I mean, even I would go if I hear donuts. <laughs> the best way to get kids to do anything, I'll buy you donuts. Okay, we're coming. Right. Great. <laughs> So, you know, and they were so actually, I was surprised at these children, how engaged they were, because I would ask questions like one of the best ways to engage children is to ask them questions just to Mm -hmm. kind of see where their mentality is at. And um, so you can kind of take it a step further and really make them think about, you know, their actions. Mm -hmm. So. I gathered, you know, about, I think it was about six children. We did this workshop. Um, We actually traveled a little closer to Wisconsin so we can have um, Miss Wisconsin Earth was there, um, as I mentioned before, with Miss Great Lakes. So, you know, I did this project in collaboration with them, and they were also guests in the um, Think Global, Act Local project as well. So it was a great turnout. Um, Right now I'm working on, because we are still shut down here, and fortunately we can't even Mm -hmm. eat in restaurants. Um, I don't know how it is by you. So um, social gatherings are absolutely a big no-no. And right now I'm putting together a project um, virtually Mm -hmm. to have people pop in and maybe do like, you know, um, and this is sneak peek of my next (laughs) (laughs) We would love, yeah. Um, it will be like reading uh, or story time with Miss Illinois where, you know, I'll be reading a story environmentally friendly um, about and teaching children again about developing these habits. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, you may ask why children, you know, everybody asks, why would you like would you want to work with children? You know, they scream, they cry. Yes. But here's the thing that children are great learners. They, you know, everything they hear, they see, they incorporate into their lives right. not more than adults like try to change a, an adult's habit after you know so many years it's nearly right. impossible but children right. consistently um you know developing um so i decided to focus on children just for that reason because once you teach them they will keep doing those habits and then guess what they'll mm-hmm. pass it on for generations to come that's true i agree I completely agree with you. And also, you know, because I'm also, I'm a teacher. Uh, my work right now is a, as a teacher. And so I'm so happy um, that you are working with children because I totally agree that at this age, they're very impressionable. So whatever you teach them, they will carry it with them um, with, to their preteens, their teens, and probably, most probably to, to their adult life. So it's so great to be starting with the kids. And thank you very much for doing that, you know. Thank you so much, Christina. And of course, right, 
and and that was such a it's just amazing that you are able to do this even in a such even in such a challenging time yes and it's speaking, definitely a challenge it has right. been a challenge yep but thank you for like like pushing through absolutely <laughs> and speaking of challenges aside i don't know if there is more because i don't know what what else could be more challenging than the challenge that the pandemic brings but aside from that is there any other challenge or hindrance um to the fulfillment of your advocacies for example when you're trying to push for more um, accessible clean water to those who are in need or you want to push for more education to our children what are other challenges that you're facing and how are you addressing those challenges yeah, I mean, one of the big ones is really just being able to work hands-on with the organizations I originally tended to work mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, currently, you know, due to no so social gatherings, everything is online, but that can only help so much. Um, I think it's really important to have that human connection with the organizers, right. and that really will set you apart and, you know, would make them want to work with you. It's different kind of vibe over the internet. I mean, sure, it's it's very limited. Let's just put it that way. Um, when right. you're actually talking to someone and looking at them straight in the eyes, it's a lot more personal. And you know, just developing those connections can really um, develop your platform so far because that will help you. You know, that, that these organizations, that's what they're there to do. They're there to partner like leaders like us, like the Miss Earth Organization advocates. True. So they can make you know a uh, difference in the world that's right yes i agree with you on that right but um props to you for um you know like trying to uh, go beyond those hurdles and uh, as evident with your work you're still able to make it work despite these challenges so thank you very much for that wow now aside from your think global act local project of course um you are also an epitome of volunteerism you know, you're also an example of, um, vol let me just take that out. You're also an example of volunteerism. So these are some of the things that, look at these photos right here. Can you tell us about um, these photos and how these are connected with your volunteer, um, volunteerism? Yes, absolutely. Actually, um, the photo on my right, where I'm holding the cans um, mm -hmm. and you can see it. If you blow up the photo, it will say, you know, we like to get plastic out of the ocean and whatnot. That's actually those plants that we have been mm -hmm. distributing to for, you know, clean and equitable water supply to um, to underprivileged communities. And the other photo is also um, volunteering. And you can see on the bottom, the reason why I took that picture there with those um, paper bags is because mm -hmm. we have actually done or transferred a lot of our using plastic bags to paper bags and that was oh. absolutely yeah so that was one of the big things it's not really connected to my platform but it's absolutely environmentally friendly so one of the things that i've worked with this organization is i was like hey that's a lot of plastic bags you know uh can we come up with an alternative way to make it a little more eco-friendly when we're delivering these you know uh, bags of food to these people in need and they said well let's purchase paper bags so but the one hurdle that kind of organizations are really struggling with is because funding is so limited currently right now to you know the, the economic climate and the epidemic um they actually Plastic bags, a lot of they get for free, while paper mm -hmm. bags they pay for. So mm -hmm. it's actually against their interests, financial interests, to right. use paper bags. But because right. a lot of organizations do care about the environment, they're really willing to sacrifice and say, hey, let's use, you know, maybe 70 30 or 50 50 at least. So we are um, using less plastic. That's great. And you know what, actually, it's been proven that in the long run, you know, these um, efforts, whether, although it uh, hurts them financially right now, will be beneficial to them in the long in run. In the long so run, absolutely. And right? that's, you know, I try to present and, um, you know, advocate for. I'm like, hey, you know, I mean, you do this now, sure, it's more out of pocket at the moment, but in the right. long run, it will save you a lot of money. And a lot of people buy it, some don't, um, and it's a process. And that's what I'm here for, you know, I'm here to advocate for that. So even a small step is, you know, a step in the right direction. 
That is true. That is true. And now I want to ask a follow up question on that. Um, aside from your advocacy, of course, for Miss um, Earth USA 2021, you also have a lot of uh, volunteer efforts. What drives your passion for uh, these volunteer efforts that you do? I think what really drives my passion is every time I volunteer somewhere, I feel like I'm really the best version of myself. It makes me feel internally so good about me as a person mm -hmm. and just taking mm -hmm. the time to, you know, um, do something good for the planet because that's more valuable than money to me personally. And that drive just to feel cleansed, to feel like you are, you know, an angel of the earth. Um, right. The, that keeps me going and every morning I wake up, that drives me to keep wanting to volunteer and um, because it makes me feel good about myself. It doesn't only help others. Right, right. But it, it makes, it leaves a good footprint on your soul as well. You right. Know? So yeah, that's definitely what keeps me going. Um, it's, you know, killing two birds with one stone. You're helping others and you're helping yourself. That is true. And I like how unique, um, um, how uniquely you explain that because, of course, a lot of people would say, "I volunteer because I want to help other people." But it's honest and it's nice to know that, of course, you also do that because you want to feel good about yourself, and Absolutely. that is very important. That is very, very important. So thank you very much for um, telling us about that. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, you know what? Um, in our caption for this, um, for this um show, we 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 put there. You definitely. Christina should be in your radar. And right now, all of the things that we've talked about are evidences that guys, Earthlings, you know, uh, Miss Earth USA, Christina should be in your radar because she is such a unique and true queen, you know, now in her own right and definitely deserving to be uh, deserving of the title of Miss Earth USA 2021. Thank you very much for that. And now, let's go to our comment section before we move on. All right. So look at, um, let's look at some of the comments already. Love the passion. Uh, sorry, again. Love the passion um, she demonstrates. Teaching children is something she's perfect for. I believe that so too, you know. Um, the instincts of a teacher is kicking in and saying that you are perfect for the job. Thank you very much. Right. And now, oh, there you go. Another from Alfonso. Volunteerism is indeed transformative. Vote for those being helped and those reaching out. Good job, Christina, for emphasizing that. That is right. See? Yeah, it's very, you know, it's not, it's okay to say, and it's really beautiful to say that I am doing this also to make, to feel good about myself. Because at the end of the day, um, you want to do that. You want to achieve that for yourself. Because if you don't feel good about what you're doing, then you won't have the passion for it. So exactly. thank you very much, Alfonso. Mm, thank you very much, Alfonso, for confirming that. Now it's time for the earthlings to ask okay so earthlings key in your questions in fact we already had questions um even earlier um on the show and now we are going to go back to that so i think john um christina was already able to answer your question so hopefully um well a lot and i was she was able to answer your question and more and some okay and uh, now next one Oh, there you go. This is an uh, interesting question. This is from Rex Nerjosh Motol Nose. My question for Miss Illinois is, why do you think that you are the best candidate for this coming Miss Earth USA 2021? I think that's an excellent question. And I would even say that that's the million dollar question. Um, right. I would have to say that, you know, I, my, all my sister queens were all great candidates. We're all just as equally committed you know to our titles and to being advocates however i do think that one thing that sets me apart as a candidate is really my long-term career path as a diplomat in environmental aspects and preserving the earth and how that will affect you know um my reign year as miss earth usa 2021 because just being educated in that field and having the passion to do it long term it's not something you do for a year but it's something you know right. for years and it will leave a legacy so one thing that i think would make me the best candidate is definitely my long-term commitment to preserving the environment 
to my advocacy because I'm not here for one year. I'm here for a legacy. Wow. You know, you know, I got goosebumps hearing, especially the final question, uh, the final, the final sentence of your yeah. answer. I'm not here to work for just. I'm here to leave a legacy, and you already, you're already starting leaving a legacy. Wow. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Christina not only knows what she's doing and knows her stuff, she also knows how to answer a million dollar question. <laughs> Amazing. Very important, right? Yeah. Because, you know, um, I think I watched an interview of you and then you said that, you know, it's not only about what you do um, before the pageant, but it's also what you do on stage, you know, or uh, vice versa. You know, you should have the advocacy, but you should also have. The, the ability to, to answer question, the healthy body to show the judges and everything. And I think you are a full package and I'm not even kidding. Thank so you. thank you very much for that. Now, um, another question from Alfonso. Fast, uh, fast forward to 10 to 15 years from now, supposing you will have been married or have children, what will you tell your future children about your Miss Earth USA experience? I love that question. I love it. And I never thought about it. Um, however, if I do have girls, I would definitely make them compete. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even tell them anything. You have to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think one thing I would tell them is, you know, I'd show them photos and I would explain to them and not because they will know how to conserve the water. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> the first five years are the most important um, when raising children. But um, I think one thing I would tell them is just, you know, show them photos and really um, make them understand that their habits mm -hmm. right now is because of a bigger cause um, mm -hmm. and because of that legacy. So that's something I would definitely emphasize. And I would make them compete, of course. <laughs> Ooh, Hopefully they all have girls. <laughs> You know what? Actually, that's also one of my um, my goals. If I if ever I do have um, daughters in the future, I'll be like, compete as early as five years old. You're already training for Miss Earth. You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, now now another question, because you're adv you're advocating for clean water supply and you know accessibility to it in the United States. But what do you think are why, why do you think there is still a problem with clean water supply in many parts of the world, even if water is supposed to be an abundant resource? This is already, I think this is already a Miss Earth International Edition question. Yeah, yes. I mean, a lot of it has to do with disparity and, you know, um, not distributing resources properly. So, you know, in the United States, let's take as an example, um, we have a lot of disparity between, you know, low income and high income individuals. Mm -hmm. And particularly the uh, the organization I work with, with St. James Food Pantry, you know, it's in the south side of Chicago. And you, there's no better location to really see that disparity than if you go there and you actually see the way people live. That's why I love doing this volunteering um, experience in the south side of Chicago, because, you know, when I go, get back to my house, it's a whole another world you know and you really see that disparity and one thing that's a problem is because well these people don't you know they're living to make ends meet or they can't make ends meet that's they're true. homeless so how do you expect them to get clean water supply when they're you know living out on the streets right so that's you know it's it's a huge huge problem and it goes beyond you know we can talk for hours um about disparity and about you know um distributing economic resources and you know and and there's the po the whole political side of that which i'm going to leave out because you know mr mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. we're not political by any means we're here to focus on the environment so right. You know, but it does have to do with disparity and distribution of resources. And, you know, it takes leaders like myself and my sister Queens to really be, you know, act as bridge builders to bring these communities and bring that equitable water supply to these, you know, unfortunate and underprivileged communities. That is an amazing answer. Thank you very much. Right. Harnessing the power not only of yourself, but also of the entire sisterhood of, um, of Miss Earth. and. Um, it only this your answer. This answer only goes to show how much you're thinking not only within your own comfort zone but also out of the box. 
And hopefully you will be able to bring that passion and that advocacy to a bigger audience into a bigger platform. And that is, of course, that's beginning with the Miss Earth USA journey for you this 2021. Now, um, before we end our show, ladies and gentlemen, I can I can't believe it's been an hour. Uh, we've been talking for an hour already. For another hour. <laughs> we, I definitely, I, I, I would love to, uh, to, to extend this for another hour or two. Um, but be, um, now moving on, it's this Christmas season. You know, um, there's a lot of, um, of course, there's going to be a lot of um, coming together, a lot of gift giving, a lot of sharing of things, but. Um, we should also not forget that one important person, one important entity we should give a gift to is, of course, Mother Earth. So I would, yes. So I would like you to, um, I would like you to complete this question, uh, complete this um, sentence. Let me just pull that up right now. Okay, here we go. So there. Uh, the best Christmas gift we can give Mother Earth is, okay, so I'd like you, Christina, to complete that sentence. The best Christmas gift we can give Mother Earth is? Our compassion. Definitely. Right. Um, compassion is most important because compassion will drive you to volunteer and it will drive you to develop habits to preserve the environment. And, you know, it sounds cliche, but really, guys, a big change really starts one step at a time. The smallest step is still a step towards where we want to be tomorrow. So you're, if you're compassionate about Mother Earth, we will be able to preserve our planet because we're almost at a point of no return. And guess what? We don't have another planet. So this is absolutely essential that this Christmas, we need to give Mother Earth our compassion and love. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Earthling, compa compassion and love, not only to each other, not only to the less fortunate, but also to Mother Earth, right? Because at this point, as um, Christina have mentioned, we are at the point of no return. Mother Earth is also less fortunate right now and needy too of our love and compassion. Now, with that answer, um, we'd love to we'd like to thank you, Christina. Thank you, thank you very much for being with us today. Um, it was such an honor. Oh, th no, thank you for being here with us right now. And thank you for gracing. Let me put that back on now. Thank you. For <laughs> <it>. <laughs> thank you for gracing our Christmas special. Um, these are the these are the episodes that become really memorable. You know, we have a, we had our Halloween special before, and it was one of the most memorable episodes. We have now our Christmas special, and it is with you. And we are so thankful that it is with you because you you are you've shared. Christmas is about sharing, and you've shared a lot um, to us today and to our Earthlings. And so, thank you for having me. I had such a great time. Thank you for being with us. Yes, we we also um, I had such a great time. Of course, the Earthlings had such a great time, and I have a feeling that this is not going to be the last time that we will be seeing you and we chatting with you. And so, crossing our fingers that that will definitely come true, and I'm sure it will. It is possible. So, um, before we leave, um, where can our Earthlings follow you? So, if they want to. Um, support your advocacy or just, um, you know, be be there to ask you questions, to consult with you and stuff like that? Um, well, I do have two um, official accounts for Miss Illinois Earth. One is Instagram at Miss Illinois Earth. And the other one is also my Facebook page, Miss Illinois Earth. You will find me on there. I also have, you know, my personal account, which I'm, you're more than welcome to Follow me if you'd like. It's uh, Christina Dot Deshev, um, and you know it's D E C H E B is in Victor. My last name. I know it can be a little, um, you know, foreign and sometimes hard to <laughs> figure out how to spell. But um, you know, follow me on my social media, Instagram, Facebook page. Reach out with any questions, and I will do my best to get back to all of you. There you go. Thank you very. Wait, I think the, there's a little. Spelling miss there. <laughs> there you go. Let me just uh, pull that up one uh, once again. So thank you very much, 
Thank you very much, Christina. And please do follow Christina in her um, official social media account so that you can be updated on what's happening to her. And of course, you can interact with her. Um, I, Christina's, I, I get the impression that Christina is an open person. And so I'm sure she will be entertaining um, your questions, uh, your comments, your consultation, your, uh, your seeking for advice. And if, if advice is what you need, I believe that Christina is uh, one of the best persons to give it to you. Pageant-wise, environment-wise, and personality-wise. I just um, saw a comment on, on how great your personality is. And I agree with that. And thank you very much for gracing us which is a great personality and your advocacy and your passion. There you Thank go, you ladies so and gentlemen. Much. No problem, anytime. And um, speaking of anytime, so thank you very much, Earthlings, for being with us anytime. I, we know a lot of you are already in holiday mode, but uh, still, thank you very much for being with us and for watching with us. And of course, um, for those who are watching this on the replay, Thank you very much. If you missed it on our live, um, the live broadcast, you can definitely watch this uh, on replay on our Facebook and YouTube page only here on Miss Earth Ground. And we will be showing you some more clips of this eventually in, um, in the coming days. Thank you very much. So with that, we would like to thank you. And we would like, of course, to wish you a happy and Merry Christmas. Ha happy holidays to everyone. And this Christmas, let's not just give a gift to each other. Let's also give the gift of compassion to Mother Earth. Thank you very much. And Thank goodbye, you. everyone. Bye.